and she's gone on missions trips before and long-term missions trips if you will just really trying to hear the heart of God and follow the heart of God and it's always just an honor for us in this house to see God put his finger on individuals and watch them just chase after that and we had Lauren uh, with us not too long ago but Today, we just have such a beautiful lady, Martha Lamb, why don't you come, and um, she's just going to take a few moments and share uh, some of the things the Lord's doing in her heart, and we want to just partner with her as best we can. God bless you. I love you. I think I turned it on. Oop, there we go. Still? Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to share with you all just kind of where God has led me. Um, I will be going back overseas to Cambodia for two years um, to teach English to university students. Mm. Um, I went over to China two summers ago and spent six weeks there teaching to middle schoolers with the organization. Um, it's called ELIC. It stands for English Language I Institute of China, kind of a mouthful. Um, they are a Christian organization. Um, and what they do is they send Christians over into... Um, I believe they have teachers in different, uh, 17 different countries, um, and they use education as a bridgeway to um, make connections with students and relate, build those relationships to then share the gospel with them. Um, I am just so excited and so blessed to be with this organization because they are amazing. Um, my whole six weeks over in China, they just really take care of you, and just their vision is just so great. Um, and they have such a good rapport with the different countries. They even send teachers into North Korea. Um, wow. So with that, yeah. Um, so with that, I'll be over in Cambodia, and um, I'm just really excited for this, um, this journey and where God has called me because um, it's a bit of a different vision than when I went to China, um, one being that I will be speak or, uh, teaching with university students. Um, I'm excited for that. And at first, I was really intimidated by that. I'm like, okay, God, here I got my degree in, you know, middle school, and I can, you know, I don't mind that. But, like, university students, that's, like, a lot. Well, as I've really learned about Cambodia um, and their history, I am just really, you know, I just know that it's just a, a really amazing opportunity to teach to university students. Because um, I don't know if you all know anything about Cambodia and their history. I did not before learning about or being called to this country. Um, so about 30 years ago, um, the Chim or a communist group called the Khmer Rouge um, came in and took control of the government. Um, they believed that Westerners had poisoned their culture and their country, and so they wanted to wipe out those that they thought were poisoned, as you'll say. So within the, uh, over the span of four years, they wiped out um, about a fourth of the population. Mm. 2.5 million people were murdered. Um, they, they targeted doctors, engineers, any type of you know, um, class that was educated, um, and took them out and brutally murdered them. Um, you can go and see what they have now is like um, called the killing fields where they have monuments with the skulls of the victims. Mm. Um, and not only did they then um, brutally murder um, the, um, any of those that they thought were you know, poisoned uh, by Westerner influence, but then they also murdered their children, mm. brutally murdered their children mm. so that they couldn't come up and take revenge. Um, so through four years, uh, a fourth of that population was wiped out. Um, they forced people out of the city um, into the countryside, and through that mass exodus, as well, people died through starvation um, and disease. Um, so as I've been learning more about this, it's just been more and more apparent of why, you know, I'll be teaching to university students. So I'll be able to build those relationships and make friends with my students and invite them into my home, whether it's for a game night or dinner. And then through that, you know, uh, through those experiences and opportunities to be able to share Christ with them. Because um, as we were singing this morning, that first song, the word stuck out to me, death is defeated, the king is alive. Yeah, and that is why yeah. God is calling you there to say, yes, mm -hmm. this country has seen a lot of death. They've seen a lot of destruction and darkness, yes. but the king is alive. You know, and there is hope. There is hope. And as a Christian, I'm mm. going to go there and share that light with them, share that hope. 
um, in such darkness because they have seen so much uh, pain, so much hurt. Um, they are one of the poorest countries in Asia because their infrastructure just completely collapsed after um, this you know, takeover of their government. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to go there and to be able to share with them you know, Christ's love and Christ's hope you know, where they're hurting because it didn't happen that long ago. So many of them, they have uncles, grandparents, even parents that were murdered during this time. Um, and a lot of them were separated and still have long, you know, or lost uh, loved ones that are still out there, but they just, they haven't been able to reconnect because of the mass exodus, just separating families. So, yes, yeah, so I'm just really, really excited to go there and, you know, to be able to share that hope and share that light with them yeah. um, where they've only known pain and darkness and death, you know, mm. to say that, yes, the king is alive and there is a better way mm. um, and there is hope out there. Um, yeah, so with that, like I said, I'll be teaching over there for about um, two years. Um, I will most likely be uh, placed in the capital. Um, and a part of that with my ministry is support raising. Um, right now, I need about um, $3,000 as a monthly support. Um, so if you're interested in just learning more about, I'll also have an email list going to just keep people regularly updated and possibly a blog where I'll be able to kind of more share in depth and stories. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll have a table out in the lobby after church if you'd like to come up and talk with me. Um, and with that, I, um, yeah, would just love to, you know, talk to you all more about it and just kind of share just different things. Um, so if you're interested, I'll be out there. And um, I also just really wanted to say um, just a thank you to Pastor Joe and also Pastor Bev back there for just being just such awesome, mm -hmm. you know, leaders um, in my journey here this past seven years mm -hmm. at this church kind of just helping me to launch into the mm. mission field. Um, I'm just really, really thankful for that. Mm. So thank you for that support. We're, thank we're you thank to you all. Mm. Mm. And we're thankful for your obedience. That's awesome. It's one thing to have the call of God on your life, and it's another to go. How many of you would go to Cambodia for two years? How many of you would go to Cambodia for two years? Just two of you. Well, you got two that can go with you. Would you stretch your hand towards Martha this morning? Father, we delight in the call of your kingdom to go into all the world. Preach the good news. Death is defeated. And the king is alive. Come on, let's say that together. Death is defeated and the king is alive. So we ask God your anointing to continue to carry Martha each step of the way, God. She's confident that you have led her to this place at this time. It's an Esther moment for her for such a time as this. And so we pray, God, that you'd put on her lips the word that needs to be fitly spoken in every situation when she comes across the hungry hearts that are yearning for truth, that are yearning for love and acceptance, that she would be an ambassador of the keys of the kingdom to a broken culture. We pray for an extra measure of your grace and your love and your strength, and yes, Lord, even provision above and beyond, Lord, what she needs. Give her above and beyond that, Lord, to bless her, that there would be no, no uh, encumbrance financially for her. That would be the least of her worries or anxieties as she goes, God. And we cover her with your precious hand and your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.
And we've had the privilege of just journeying with Martha over the years, and she just is a lover of God. And uh, so as her pastor, I can confidently say to you that if you would help support her, it's not just giving money, but you literally are investing in the kingdom of God in a part of the world that you will never get to go. And as I'm looking out, there are a few young ladies in this room that the Lord has put his finger on your heart for missions. And for whatever reason, you haven't quite fulfilled that. I don't know how God's going to do that in your life, but you know who you are as I speak those words. And especially you, ask the Lord how you're able to help Martha go. You, aren't, you know, when God puts a dream in your heart and you haven't been able to fulfill that dream, the best thing you can do is help somebody else fulfill theirs and God will fulfill yours. It's just part of the, how the kingdom works. So Martha, we love you. God bless you. Mm. Um, so it will be um, January springtime. The date for departure is yet to be set. So all that is still in the works. But yeah, so coming up soon. So you've got lots of time to get your finances together to send her. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, let's have the ushers come. Let's take communion together this morning before I preach. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, you're so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God.
Has everyone been served that needs to be served? I just had this overwhelming sense this morning as they were distributing the emblems that sometimes when my family comes home and all the kids are around the table, I'm usually sitting at the head of the table because that's what dads do. And my eyes are filled with tears so many times. Joyful tears. My family's home. We're together. And God is good. I feel that way right now. Daddy's at the head of the table. And Daddy's at the head of the table. His family is around the table this morning. And so Jesus took a loaf of bread and he tore a piece from it. And the scripture says in 1 Corinthians that he lifted it up and he says these words. This is my body, which is broken for you. Wow. What a wonderful leader, amen? What a wonderful leader, amen? That he would break his body for me. But the rest of the loaf is still there. That's you and me. And we get to tear a piece off. Not of me. You don't get to tear a piece off of me. And I don't get to tear a piece off from you. But we get to tear a piece off from him. Because his body was broken for us. And we take a piece. And as we all lift it up, we... we have separate pieces, but it all belongs to one. This is not me and you. This is us in him. Amen? Isn't that what Jesus said? Father, make them one as you and I am one. I and you and me and I, I and you and you and me, may they be in us. Here we are today. The Father's at the head of the table. And Lord, we thank you today. That each one that holds this emblem in their hand is part of the body of Christ. Would you just thank God that you've been grafted into the body of Christ? Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. You've been so good to us. And we receive this today as a reminder. You said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me until I come. You haven't come yet, so we just want to be reminded of you afresh and anew as if we weren't already because your presence is so thick in this room today. So thick in this room today. Your spirit is confirming that we are part of the body of Christ, that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. I thank you for my brothers and sisters as we sit around the table this morning. And we eat together. Let's eat together. We thank you, Jesus. And Paul, reflecting on that time around the table, says and Jesus lifted up the cup and he said this is a new covenant in my blood which is poured out for many are you part of the many today 
He wants you to be if you're not. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you need to know that Jesus spilled his blood, literally came from heaven and took on the form of man and paid a terrible price. He willingly laid down his life and shed his blood for you so that you could have forgiveness of sin today. Oh, it's a marvelous thing. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So, Father, we thank you for sending Jesus. And Jesus, we thank you for spilling your blood so that our sin would no longer just be covered, but would be removed as far as the east and from the west. Nothing, no one could separate our sin from us, but you did. And you're the great healer of the soul. And so we receive today this precious gift of the blood of Jesus Christ through this symbol in this cup today. Let's drink together. Amen. Worship team, thank you. I had a message that I was excited to share with you today, a message on the kingdom, principles of the kingdom. And as I was sitting down front this morning, I felt pressed of the Lord to go a different direction. How many know that's okay? It's not that the Holy Spirit didn't know what he was doing during the middle of the week, but he wants to do something unique right now in our midst. So if you have your Bible, it's open to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 1. Ephesians 5, verse 1. I'm reading from the New International Version. Father, as we open your word today, there is a rhema word that you're wanting to speak to your people So I ask that you would animate my vessel today. As you have poured in, that you would also pour out. Pour out what you have poured in, Spirit of God. We thank you for your word. We cherish it. And we say amen to what you want to do in our hearts and lives. Amen. Be imitators of God just spent a few days with my youngest grandson, Asher. He's 10 months old. And what a delight. Children do interesting things at 10 months old, don't they? But he's at the stage where he's imitating. So a little 10-month-old singing his songs 
No words, just noises. And I sat with him on his bedroom floor, and he had a certain tone in his song. And I said, and he said, wow, pretty impressive. Be imitators of God. Wow. Can we just stop there and go home? <laughs> Be imitators of God. Whew. That's no small task. God is good. God is good. Some of you are saying all the time, but you don't believe that. Did you hear what I just said? It's, it's, a, it's a cute saying, God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Do we believe that? What happens when life deals a blow to you that seems to crush everything you know? Is God still good? Oh, I, I won't take time to list all the blows that life could give, but as I made that statement, you know what they are. You, you have felt them. You have, you have been, been crushed under some of the blows of life. You know the weight of what that is. But do not allow that to over the shadow that God still is good. Promises. God's given some of you promises. And you stopped believing in the promise because you haven't seen it happen yet. Remember the word that was spoken this morning. Abraham and Sarah. Oh God, you're going to give us kids. Not just one, but like the sands on the seashore. Well, Sarah, God must not know what he's talking about. No, God is good. All the time. Not your time. In his time. In his time, in the Kairos time, in, in the time of God, he is good. Thank you. In the time of God, he is good. In his timing. Be imitators of God. What's the next word? Therefore, as dear children. Be imitators of God, therefore. Therefore, what's the therefore? You have to go back to the previous chapter. Because Jesus gave himself for you. Read it. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, in Christ, God forgave you. In Christ, God forgave you. So be imitators of God. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Say hi to everybody. 
just as in Christ, God has forgiven you. And live a life of love. Oh, my mind is a scary thing. Jesus, help me rein it in. Live a life of love just as Christ loved you. How much did Christ love you? Do you know that? Do you know how much Christ loved you? Can you, can you wholeheartedly put your name in that sentence, just as Christ loved Richard E. Golf? Just as Christ loved Mark Isbister? Just as Christ loved Bill Robertson? Just as Christ loved Peggy Reed. Can you put your name in that sentence? And believe it. It's one thing to say, for God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. But do you believe that God loved you that much that he gave Jesus? God loves me. Uh, the chorus we used to sing years ago, Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Come on, put your hand over your heart. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, you're a beautiful choir. God really does love you. He loves us. And he gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering to God. Death, fragrant, death, fragrant. When we think of death, fragrant isn't the word. We're not saying... Uh, my grandmother died. It was so fragrant. Oh, there's, there's lots of pain. Lots of grief and lots of sorrow. But Jesus' death was a fragrant offering. And we have to go back to the context of him giving himself because it goes back to what God said, that without the shedding of blood, there would be no of sin. And so we have all throughout the Old Testament, bulls and goats and being thrown on, on, onto a, uh, an altar. And the scripture says that the incense rose to heaven. It was the it was the sign that something was just given to him. And if we can in our minds this morning imagine Jesus being that lamb that was slain once a year for the forgiveness of the people of God, Israel. 
that spotless lamb. He couldn't have any blemishes on him. He had to be a perfect, spotless lamb. And he was laid on the altar and the incense rose to heaven. And something about that smell to God is fragrant. It's not the smell itself, if you will. It's what the smell represents to him. And the smell, what he smells when he smells that fragrance, he he smells obedience. He smells sacrifice. He, He smells willingness to do what it is that he wanted us to do. And that takes various forms in all of our lives. My obedience won't look like your obedience. And your obedience won't look like my obedience. But what he wants to know is, are you willing to lay yourself on the altar like Christ did and become a fragrant offering as Christ did? And that's the call. It's what people like Martha understand. Cambodia, God, my mom wants me to stay home. I'm sure she does. Uh, Stay home in safe Chambersburg. It's, it's, It's God putting his finger on Deb Shaw's life in the middle of her life when she should be looking to to plan for retirement, and God says, I want you to go to Japan. Japan, God. Yes, Japan. Just go. And we're willing to go. And so each of our sacrifice, now God's not calling all of us to go around the world, but he may be calling you to go to your neighbor. Uh, he may be calling you to go to somebody at work. And it does take sacrifice. It's you placing your will on the altar of his word. Because when he speaks and we choose not to obey, instead of the fragrant offering and, uh, of obedience, he has a stench of disobedience. And some of you have a call of God on your life. You have a call, and somewhere along the line, you, you're derailed. Somewhere along the line, you, you took a, a wrong turn. And I, you need to know today that he who called you is faithful. He who called you is faithful. He's faithful to his word because... His word combined with your obedience uh, allows a fragrant offering to go up before the throne of grace. And this morning, the love of God has been a theme that God loves us. He's chasing after us. Surely, goodness and mercy, they, uh, we, the scripture says follow, but we, we might throw that word chase. He, he, if you're running from God, he, he's running after you. He's chasing after you. If you're walking away from God, he's walking after you. He's, his love he chases after us. I know I shared this illustration uh, recently, but I, I need to share it again. The Holy Spirit keeps bringing it back to my mind. I have a fish pond in front of my house, and it has 12 or so goldfish in there. One tiny little goldfish from Deb Shaw. And then I've got some big, beautiful orange and white ones, and have big beautiful tails. I've got a little short stubby black one with orange polka dots and he's got a funky tail. Like I don't know what you call it. It's just a funky tail. 
And when it's time to feed them, they all come up to the surface and their mouths are just going. And so I start feeding them. The big ones have big mouths. And they eat a lot. And they're bullies. They push the fish out of the way so they can eat. But little weenie doesn't seem to get any much food. I don't know what I call him, but he's a weenie this morning. Um, and I, as I'm feeding the fish, I try to distribute it throughout the pond so that they can spread out a little bit. And sure enough, little weenie's all by himself, and I'm trying to anticipate where weenie's going, and I'm throwing food to weenie, but weenie's going where everybody else is going. And I've done my best to separate them so I could feed Weenie, but Weenie is too busy figuring out what everybody else is doing. And what I realized at some point was the food that I have is pretty good sized little pellets, and Weenie would get one of those in his mouth, and it looked like he had a cigar. He, was, he couldn't eat it, he was too Weenie. And he's swimming around with a cigar in his mouth. And that poor guy, he was hungry, but I, I gave him too much, too big. And so I brought some of the food in, and I ground it up and made some smaller pieces. But it still didn't matter. Weenie was too busy chasing everybody else's food. You need to know this morning that your father knows what you need before you ask. And he's wanting to feed you. Even if it has to be milk, he's wanting to feed you. As Amelia is sucking on her binky down here. He's wanting to feed you. He'll give you bite-sized pieces. If you'll just stop chasing after everything and everyone else, and you will take time to look to the Father and say, here I am, feed me. If little weenie would just stop in the pond and say, where's that food coming from? I see it splashing here and I see it splashing there, but how is it getting in there? And realize that there's a, a puppet master was dropping the pellets, and he would just stop and say, here, here I am, little weenie. Maybe you're a little weenie this morning. Maybe you're a big bully fish, and you're just soaking up all of the word of God that you get. Wherever we are in the pond, if we'll just turn our eyes on Jesus, and look full in his wonderful face. Then the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Come unto me, all you that are weary heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Stop chasing after somebody else's morsel. He has some just the right size for you. Recently, I went out and bought a whole new kind of food just for weenie. A whole container just for weenie. And weenie's happy, you know why? Because all the other fish food floats on the top, but this goes down. And so weenies way down here, 
looking at all the big boys up there, and he's just eating as it's coming down. Listen, your father knows what you have need of long before you ask. He knows. Sorry to reduce this message to goldfish this morning. But sometimes we need a physical illustration to bring the point home. Would you just bow your head with me this morning, Spirit of God? We want to say thank you for being an example to us that we can imitate and in, in our imitating you, we will never go wrong. You are righteous. You are true. You are just. And we trust you today. We trust in your goodness. We trust that you are running after us today. There's some of you in this room today that still don't really believe that. God feels very far from you. Can, can I just encourage you today to stop running? You know, the previous verses in chapter 4 talks about getting rid of lying and sexual immorality and all of that because of what Jesus done. And sometimes it's just for you, it might be just getting rid of some baggage in your life. So that he has room. And he's got room. You got, you got your heart filled with too many other things. And so if that's you today, I, I can't remove the baggage for you. That's, that's between you and him. But you need to find a place to stop running. Just open your heart to daddy. Because he's got bite-sized pieces just for you. And he's wanting to feed you. I think it's Isaiah 53 or Isaiah 55, I don't know. Come and eat and drink of me. He's bidding us to come and to eat and to drink of him. And so, Lord, as we, we do that individually, we thank you, God, for your provision over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we're dismissed this morning, um, uh, I'm going to invite Pastor Bev and her husband, Butch. Would you come too, please? Um, Pastor Bev wants to share in her heart this morning something the Lord's spoken to her. And we want to share that with you. Let me get your microphone. Now, why don't you come up here, Beverly and Butch? Thank you, Butch, for that note. In 2004, my life came to a head. Never did I know. Would be the nursing field and head into ministry. Never did I dream that this would be the heartbeat of my life. It has been so exciting to see miracles and small children giving their hearts to God and living it out and watching them pray for others and watch the warrior spirit arise in them. What a joy it has been to serve my church family. But most of all, I want to thank Pastor Joe for giving me wings to fly. And for believing in me, even when I thought I couldn't. If it wasn't for Pastor Joe and his church family, I wouldn't be here today using the gifts that the Lord has entrusted to me. Recently, in my spirit, I sensed the Lord saying, shift. And one morning in the quiet hours, God said, it's time to go. And I knew what that meant. So at the, end of, at the end of August, we will close out our ministry here at Christian Life. God is now shifting me to my next assignment, which is the unknown. But Butch and I will follow his voice without fear, and we're going to walk in faith. This has been the best 15 years of our lives. It's better to walk in obedience and sacrifice. 
each of you will remain in our hearts. Please be praying with us for the next journey into the unknown. And in return, we will be praying for you. May God continue to use you and your gifts here at CLC. I know that God is going to use you all greatly. And I pray that the mighty warrior within you will arise. And we just want you to know that we all love you very much. So I'm going to squeeze in between you here, not to break up your marriage, but. <laughs> this is a precious couple. And what we need to understand is um, ministry is loan time. There are gifts in the kingdom of God, and for whatever reason, in seasons, he moves those gifts around because a gift is needed somewhere else. Our hearts are heavy. and We have spent too many days crying. Uh, and uh, so Beverly literally has no idea what the Lord's leading her to um, and so you can imagine financially even that's a scary step but feel strongly that the Lord's saying now is the time to step out here at Christian Life and so with heavy hearts uh, as you can imagine, we've spent 15 years together in ministry. And it's been awesome. I can assure you this has been a blessing to have Beverly on staff. And Butch, as a sidekick, is just a, what a double whammy for a team. He's got a servant's heart. He loves, loves his wife, loves kids, loves feeding kids. Did you starve growing up or something? <laughs> I don't know. He just loves feeding kids. Um, and does a great job. But he's been a support to his wife over the years, and it's a beautiful family. I've had the privilege of watching their family over 15 years just go through some bumps and God restoring, and just the beautiful heart they have for ministry. And um, They just love God, and it says a lot about them as parents to raise kids that love God. She's been a faithful warrior. Many of you have had your hearts connected to her and really to the spirit of God that's in her, the grace of God that's in her. So I'm going to ask you if you would stand and stretch your hands towards this precious couple. Now, what does this mean to Christian life? It means that we're we have lots of holes now in our ministry team. Mm -hmm. uh, Bev wasn't just a children's pastor. And I, I say that with all respect. She had many hats here. And she's a godly woman. And Butch is a godly man. Butch is like the, uh, the bubble on the level. He helps keep this wild woman <laughs> in line. <laughs> Every once in a while, he has to rein her in. So, Butch, we're praying especially for you while this wild woman does whatever the Lord's doing in her life. That we give you grace to handle that transition. You know, listen, we can bemoan this or we can celebrate this, yeah. right? And if it's the, the will of the Lord, and we're confident of that, that it is, then we have to say amen to it, as hard as it is. We say amen to that because the Lord has good plans for them, and that only means that the Lord has good plans for us. Right. He doesn't take something away, but what he gives something better. Amen? And so we're going to just say amen to that. So, Father, we thank you for Beverly. Thank you for Butch. We thank you for their faithfulness, their willingness to obey the Lord. Fifteen years ago when you said walk away from a lucrative nursing position and go take care of my kids. She faithfully did that. And here she is again, 15 years later, feeling that call of God again, saying walk this way. This is the way. Come, come, walk this way. Where am I going, Father? I don't know. Just go to a land that I will send you like Abraham. 
And so she willingly, they willingly accept that call on their life and chase after your will, Lord God. And so we bless them in the transition. We bless the future that you have for them, the plans that you have for them. Your word says they're good and prosperous plans, plans that have a future and hope. And so, Lord, we want to uh, just bless and thank her for all that she's done here and Butch has done here in Christian life. And we love them, and we send them off in your care with your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So just to answer a few questions, Beverly will be here through the end of August. Um, She'll probably be attending other churches for a while just to allow whoever the new person that comes in to her position, give them a chance to spread their wings. Um, She's still living in the area, at least at this point. Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, Still living in the area. And um, the last Wednesday of the month, I think the date is the 28th of August, we'll be having a celebration on that Wednesday. Uh, This is news to you, I know. She hasn't heard this yet. Uh, we'll be having a celebration that Wednesday for her. She'll be preparing for that, how the Lord would use you to bless them in their journey. And uh, we'll have uh, a Wednesday night, perhaps a, a meal where we can celebrate and an honoring time. Some of you will be asked to help in that honoring of a life ministry well lived here at Christian Life Church. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Be praying for this couple, would you? God bless you.